Hi, this is Pauline Samuels, Editor-in-Chief of Creative Artists Magazine. Hi, this is Aprajita. I'm a watercolor artist. I paint in other mediums as well, but watercolors is my favorite. And today I'm going to teach you one of a very, very simple, simple looking uh, tiny landscape, which I'm planning to enlarge today. So this is what we're going to paint. Okay, so that is Aprajita and she is our watercolorer. And we're gonna do a, a mini class here to share with all of you. And for those watching, we're gonna give you the colors we're using and the tools that you'll need to follow along with us. Okay, thank you Aprajita, you have the table here. Thank and you. I'm following along as well. Wonderful. So I'm using uh, Vincent Newton colors here uh, with this. We don't need too many colors. It's a limited palette that we would require. We would need some violets, some hues of browns, oranges, and then a, a few yellows. So what I'm taking here is, just point to the, what I'm taking here is a violet, red, burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, bright medium yellow, lemon yellow. These, these colors are more than enough for us to start with this kind of a landscape. So this shows, this is, a, this is an evening scene with some fall trees around. Hence, you know, you have, you have different hues of colors for the evenings. So let's get started. Let me know uh, once you have your colors out, Colin. Okay, I've got my colors out. Just keep going. I'll follow along. Anyone that needs to uh, catch up, you can just pause the video and um, restart it at your, at your liking. Mm -hmm. So first and foremost thing for any watercolor painting is to stretch the paper well. So I've stretched my paper with a masking tape around it on any hard surface. This is going to be a wet on wet watercolor. So the first thing that I'll do is either use a spray bottle to make the paper wet. That's one way of doing this. Another one is using a brush and just make your entire sheet wet. The water should not be dripping or you know, collecting anywhere on the paper, it should be evenly spread on the paper and you would see a nice shine on the paper. Keep some paper towels handy when you're painting. When you're painting with any medium for that matter, not just watercolors. Aprajita, is it important to go in one direction or can we just apply it? We can apply it in any direction. We just want to make sure that none of the edges of the, water, uh, of the paper are dry. The water should soak in into the paper so that it stays wet for a longer time. Okay. We're going to start with uh, lemon yellow. Can I see your brush that you're using? My brush? Is, is there a, a point on it? Uh, yes, there is a, there's a nice point on this. Okay. This is number 12 because I want, to, I want to use this brush to spread color across. So I would prefer a bigger brush here. Okay, sounds good. And also you mentioned something to me earlier that we could possibly share with the viewing audience about what type of brush that we can use. And you said that it should be hair instead yeah, of it like a plastic. So generally for watercolors, we use natural hair brushes because they are, they are able to absorb water. And it, it helps keeping, uh, making your watercolor painting uh, without any brush strokes because generally synthetic brushes leave a brush stroke. 
But when you're doing watercolor painting, you're using a lot of water, even synthetic brushes can be used. I prefer to use natural hair brushes all the time for watercolor. So I keep, you know, different sets of brushes for painting with different mediums. Okay, I just thought it was important to share that because you're the expert here. And I don't know if everyone was aware of that, that it's best to use the hair brushes. Because when I was in the store, I saw a number of plastic style brushes and things like right. that. And I'm glad you mentioned it to me so I would get the one that would give me the best results. So we go, this, um, it doesn't need a lot of drawing. You know, I've, I've done this directly with the brush. But for anybody to get an idea, what I'll do is I'll use lemon yellow, which is my lightest tone for the painting, to just create a hint of what all I'm, we are going to paint in this. So I'll, I'll, take, I'll fill my brush with very little color so that I can just create a hint of my drawing for the painting. I'll have a few trees here. So I'm just creating a hint of where all I need a drawing. Here is a little path. So that just helps me know where I'm going to place what. Now I'll go ahead with the lemon yellow. I'll start from here as we're trying to create an evening scene here. I have a lot of water in my color. The color is very diluted because it's just the first wash. And we all know that watercolors dry out lighter. So this is going to be lighter when it dries out. I'm going to make the edges a little darker by using yellow ochre. If you feel your sheet has started drying up, which is the case with mine, I would just spray some water around. The paper that I'm using is uh, 300 GSM cold pressed from Fibriano. What I do is I'm taking burnt sienna, mixing it a little bit yellow ochre. In starting to create the trees in the background. I'm a little bit nervous about mine. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to stop? No, no, no. Keep going. I'll, I'll manage. Okay. Okay. And I'm going a little fast. No, no, no. We need you to go fast. Um, okay. The viewers will be able to pause it, but for the sake of recording it, I think it's okay yeah. for us to keep going. Okay. Okay. A okay. uh, little bit of purple or violet. Add that with. I do a lot of mixing of colors so that I'm I'm not using the color right from the tube. Okay. I create my I create my own shades. I try to make them uh, as uh, as natural as possible by mixing different shades. So on the right hand side, if you even look at the painting, there's a lot of purple. And then this purple flows in on this side, but then it all becomes orange and red. Got it. So hence we're doing a hint of purple here. Whereas here we are doing a lot of burnt sienna trees in the background. 
Okay. This is fun. I'm hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> As I told, this is just the first layer. You need a lot of layers here to create that busy painting. That and just, just, just keep you know adding a hint of whichever color you are doing across, so that it doesn't look like there is you know any of any of the any of the areas in your painting are dominated by one color. And it it looks like as a as a different part of the scene. Yes. So what I'm doing is I'm I'm even adding those you know hints of purple on this side. So this is a burnt sienna. I want to use this mixed a little bit yellow ochre to create a hint of bushes in the background. The sienna. You work fairly quickly. I like it. I can only you gave me only an hour, Colin. Huh? <laughs> you gave me only an hour, so we have to finish this in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are definitely pulling it off. It looks so good. I mean, mine may not look as good as yours because I'm not proficient in watercolor. But that's what this what lesson this lesson is about: is to give us a starting point. And then yeah. uh, from there, so that perhaps one day we could be as good as you are. <laughs> Thank you. So the thing is, when when you do the reason why you have to be quick is if you want to if you want to do things on your wet sheet, you want to do them before you know this the sheet start, starts drying up. Okay. And if it dries up, then of course there are ways to ways to keep keep wetting it again and again but I prefer to put as many strokes at least for the background as possible in the first wash nice. I feel like a real artist over here <laughs> well I am an artist but just not a watercolor artist <laughs> Yeah, watercolors don't, uh, they're, they're unforgivable, you know. It's very difficult because people don't realize that how hard this is um, when you are used to working with other elements. I'm a digital artist for the most part. I can mm -hmm. do acrylics, which also dry fast, and of mm -hmm. course, um, pencil drawing. Just create random shapes. We don't. So in nature, nothing is perfect, but everything is so beautiful. So don't, don't, don't try to be perfect while painting. Just go ahead. Go, go with the flow. Le lose your hand. Just let, let these tree branches and trees get formed automatically as you keep painting. Don't try to be too perfectionist. That's. I think that's good for the first wash. I'll let it dry a little. I'll change my brush. I'll take a smaller brush. This time it is number, I'll prefer number six. Yeah. Yeah. 
I hope I can make you proud of this beautiful lesson here that I'm getting, how to make a tree in the forest. <laughs> you know what, I haven't used this um, purple yet. Well, I used it, but not for the bottom of you are. Let's start with the darker tones now, as the sheet has started getting a little dried up. Uh, going ahead with burnt sienna, adding a little bit of raw umber to that, and start creating more trees here. More trees. Okay, I was wondering, mine's look a little scarce. <laughs> <laughs> So if you remember, even in our conversation, I was telling you, I try to create depth in my paintings. Right. You know, so that that is how it happens. You know, every time you just keep adding more pigment to your brush and the lighter pigment goes in the back and, you know, that, that starts giving a depth to what you're painting. So there, may, there are different layers that you're going to do. So nothing's going to look scarce. We're going to fill it up. We're going to make sure that it looks like a dense forest. I'll make one th thick tree here. If you see, you know, when, when, uh, when it's about watercolors, the color in the background, they always keep getting activated. Unlike oils and acrylics, as soon as you add water, the pigment activates again uh, and hence you know you you'll you'll just keep getting those background colors mixed in every new layer that you're creating so if you if you see here i've already got the yellow of the background mixing in the in the tree tree trunk i can see that on my page actually too Let me add a little darker purple trees here. Purple mixed with uh, burnt umber to get a darker tone. Keep adding some random branches too. We're adding a hint of some some leaves in the background. And the way we are going to do it is just take some yellow ochre, mix it a little with the color on your palette, maybe a burnt sienna. Because on this side, we are, we are doing more of the reds and oranges and browns. So I'm just adding hint of few leaves in the background by randomly spreading color around. Just some random spots. We are not going to paint something which is realistic, but once you once you finish painting, everything's gonna fall together. So I don't. Because mine looks a hot mess right now. <laughs> can can I can I look at yours? Oh, I'm so ashamed. I'm, okay. Mm -hmm. You're doing well. Am I? Yeah. yeah, 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 of course, <laughs> of course. <laughs> okay. It's okay. just that your, your your pathway is not very clear. The no. way I've, I've left, I've left some, uh, you know, some, some gap here to show that there is a nice path leading to that area in the, in the forest. Yeah, I didn't do that. So can, how can I add one by chance? You can, uh, by just filling just takes take a lot of water in your brush yes put it in that area yes like this take a paper towel 
Yes. Dab it over and lift the color. Yes. I actually just tried that. Mm -hmm. it's magic, it's clearing the way. Yeah. So now what's the color that you're using pretty much for the um, pathway there? I mean, for the leaves. For the leaves, what I did was I used yellow ochre mixed with burnt sienna. Okay. Like this. Some hints. This is actually a lot of fun. It is. Thank you for sharing your um, wonderful paint colors with us today. Um, again, this is very beginner friendly and, and just to get you started. And a Projita sometimes do more in-depth classes. And I'm gonna try to um, get her to share when she's gonna do one um, a little mm -hmm. bit. We'll get to see some of her other works too. She's gonna show us some of her other arts. Yep. So this is, I, uh, I'm painting a series on trees and pathways. So this is, this is gonna, gonna be another addition in the same collection for me. Okay. And I'm going to show you this few other paintings in the same collection. Once we are done with this. Awesome. Let me see that stroke that you make to get those leaves. Like what did you do to make that leaf? Like the, okay. the, the look of the leaves on the tree. Like did you dab? Did you stroke? Did you swirl it? Just, just, just add color to your brush. Yes. And randomly just start creating those tiny patterns. Oh, awesome. Okay, that was nice to see. I, I missed it earlier. Mm -hmm. Another way to do this, and I, I do that often in my paintings, is I just fill up my brush with color and splatter. Oh, okay. I splatter and then I, if I find them too artificial, I just merge them into the painting. The benefit of having a brush with a tip is that you can use it to create fine lines too. You don't need to keep changing your brush. So this is precisely our second layer. Uh, for the next layer, I'll just add more pigment, less water and make them darker. It's again, burnt sienna, burnt umber. I'll probably add a hint of red to that. Start creating the darker trees. Ah. Less water on the brush, is that how you accomplish that? Yes, less water, more pigments is how you accomplish the darker tones. So it's so easy with the watercolors that you don't you don't really need whites at all. If you want to make your color lighter, just add more water. So when I'm adding more trees, I keep adding more to the the foreground layer as well. If you see, because this this needs to be rich too. 
Okay. The foreground, the way we are, we, what we are trying to represent here is, you know, there are lots of leaves fallen, or there, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a less traveled path. So there would be bushes, there would be branches, fallen leaves, burnt grass, any of those things. Now what I'm doing is I'm Not even adding adding few brighter leaves here. I want to give some highlight to this tree. Pan out a little bit so I can. There we go. It would be darker. On the, the on the left. No, this is this is red. Oh, the red. Okay, I have that. So mix red with uh, your burnt sienna. So it's not it's not a very bright red which pops out. It should blend in with the painting. Mm -hmm. My daughter was showing showing me doing this class with you to somebody on her phone. Oh, she said, Mama, nice class. Everyone's doing this Zoom, you know. Right, um, right. I, for one, a lot of people have a lot of resentment about having to communicate like this. But I'll be honest with you, if you think about it, you and mm -hmm. I wouldn't be able to do this in person very easily. So I'm grateful for the ability to connect with people all over the world, and um, absolutely to be able to to make these connections because yeah, we couldn't do this in person. Yeah, it just it just extends your scope. It just extend you know your ability to connect with people who are far off. Yes, so it's it's just amazing. I'm thinking of adding some orange in my palette i think it it needs a little more brightness so i'm taking a little bit of orange here i think i've been using orange for red <laughs> <laughs> you are <laughs> oh my God. I'm like, Wait a minute. you say orange i have i've been using that for red i haven't even used the red who oh, is it <laughs> interesting so is you're already the there million? Again, your Vincent Newton orange, uh, I really like this because it's not striking orange. It blends well with the browns and the reds. So if you see when 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 it's kind of golden hour in the evening, you see few of the few of the leaves really bright in yellows and orange colors. That's that's precisely what I'm trying to create here. Hence, I thought of you know adding adding some orange. I'm doing some splatter here, and it looks like I've got some dots. Yeah, I have to admit that mine is like yours yet. <laughs> And I know everyone's going to want to see the one I made. <laughs> so I'm trying so hard to keep up with you. You're the expert. And that's the important part. So this is why we buy our artwork is because they can <laughs> fun to learn and to, for us to be novices and to mm -hmm. practice one day and hopefully turn it into an art form. But in the meantime, we can definitely buy and appreciate art from people who um, actually already have the, the expert training. Now, how long have you been doing watercolors? I've been doing watercolors for quite a while, probably uh, 15 years by now. Oh, wow. Yes. And uh, I've not learned. So there's there's no secret to it. It's just about, you know, being being consistently practicing and trying different techniques yourself and see what uh, what what is it that you enjoy the most? You know, so I have not 
I have not learned art. I have not been professionally trained, and that kind of you know kept me away from you know picking this up professionally for all these years. I used to always think that because I'm not professionally trained, should I really, oh. you know? So I'm so glad but. you listened to that nonsense because there are so many amazing artists out there who are so mm-hmm. who's like yourself, whose work is something that has so much beauty with the world. You need it. 